my first on-camera monitor was the Fieldworld F6 Plus. Now, as I'm gearing up to make a new, more extensive comparison video on camera monitors, I decided to reach out to Fieldworld to see if they'd be interested in sending me something reasonably affordable but capable with at least one little standout feature. They decided to send me their new, I think it's new, P6X, which is this little fellow, <laughs> and that's what we're looking at in this video. Now, before we go into any details and that sort of stuff, I just wanted to touch briefly on what makes this monitor kind of fit the bill. We talked about something affordable, but with some interesting aspect or feature to it. So first of all, this monitor currently sells for $169.99, and it's one of very few monitors, especially at this price point that can handle a 4K 60 frame per second signal. I know this is gonna be huge for a lot of you out there since it's probably the most common question that I get when it comes to monitors and monitor specs. So if you're into 4K 60, this might be a great option for you. Stick around and find out. So I always like to start these videos with a brief exterior tour. I think the, the in and outputs on these monitors can be uh, deal breakers and deal makers in some cases. But the first thing that I wanna bring up here in this tour is the pretty sleek aluminum housing on this monitor. We also get a five and a half inch IPS touchscreen display with a pixel density of 400 PPI and a 1000 nit brightness. We also get HDMI 2.0 instead of the more common 1.4, which is, you know, uh, what you get on most affordable monitors that can do 4K 60. We also get a couple of these function buttons here on the top, which allows us to access different functions and features, obviously, but they also let us navigate the menu, which is great if you're wearing gloves or you're just, you know, eating while you're shooting and you, you have sticky fingers or something. The monitor can be powered with a regular MPF battery or something like this adapter, which is what I normally use when I hook things up to a V-mount. There's also a regular DC power and USB-C port that can be used to power this monitor. So plenty of options to power this monitor, which I really, really like. I think that's kind of important, even if you most of the time today, you are using bigger batteries and that kind of stuff, just being able to plug it into a regular power bank, not even a power delivery one, you know, can sometimes help you save the day. And speaking of powering things, there's an 8 volt DC out here at the bottom to feed other gadgets like follow focus units, transmitters, or even your camera with a regulated dummy battery. The volume of the headphone jack can be controlled by swiping up and down on the left hand side of the screen like this, while swiping on the right hand side will adjust the screen brightness. Now it may seem like a pretty trivial feature, but I actually use this feature quite a lot on every monitor that I use that has this swipe up and down feature. When there's, you know, a, a bit of a lull, when there's not a whole lot going on, so you're not actively shooting, but you still wanna be ready to capture anything that might happen, instead of powering down your monitor and wait on that boot up time, which we'll take a look at here in just a second, by the way, I, I prefer to just dim down the monitor and if something happens, I just swipe up and I'm ready to go in just a, a second or two. The menu system has gotten quite a bit of an upgrade since my days on the F6 Plus. It's actually looking pretty good and I find it easy to navigate. And we'll find most of the tools and features in here like airy style false colors, crop guides, including vertical 9x16 for social media and that kind of stuff. So pretty much everything you need. But my favorite feature is the new, well, at least new to me, user menu that along with these function buttons here on top will let you navigate and access different features much, much easier, which makes this an absolute joy to use out in the field while you're running and gunning. So the user menu is actually one of my favorite features, like I might have just <laughs> told you, but what it actually does, it allows you to take a whole bunch of different features that you need and bundle all of those into different presets. So you have basically like a mini menu with 
the the uh, the presets or the features that you want to have at hand for a specific camera or a specific shooting scenario so today when we're out here i'm shooting on an anamorphic lens so i want to have access to anamorphic d squeeze focus peaking that sort of stuff but if i'm using this monitor in my studio i'd probably would like to have another set of features available so i can have all of those things set up at these different user menus which makes using this monitor super fast and, and super easy since i haven't used my f6 plus in quite a while i decided to ask my friend john who uses that very same monitor almost daily what he thinks about the new p6x i like how it's it feels more responsive when i'm pressing uh, the screen uh, compared to my own. Uh, my own is very old by now, but uh, I, I like the, the feel of this one. It's very easy to navigate, to find uh, everything you need. I get the histogram, vectorgram, waveform. I have different kind of grids. I love that. Image, what's there? Aspect ratio, anamorphic, image flip. It's all there and it feels like there are some things that I think is newer compared to my own. Uh, like the grids and stuff like that. I, I think I have grids, but you have like these save frames. I don't have that. That's smart. So yeah, the user menu lets you put together a set of features and functions and kind of bundle those into different presets. And this obviously makes it super easy when you're switching and jumping from different cameras or different shooting scenarios. And speaking of anamorphic, here's something that I would like to see other manufacturers copy or steal from Fieldworld. So apart from having these, you know, just a couple of D-Squeeze presets here, they also have this slider adjustment that basically allows you to set any D-Squeeze ratio you like. So if you're using, I don't know, an anamorphic lens with an anamorphic adapter, that sort of stuff, you can just dial in your desired squeeze factor on the slider instead of bombarding the manufacturers about uh, firmware updates, adding more squeeze factors and that sort of stuff. So this one is really, really great if you're shooting with anamorphic lenses. Like most monitors today, the P6X also lets you load your own LUTs onto the monitor, which is done over the USB-C port here in the bottom. That's why we get one of those little adapters from USB-A to USB-C, by the way. And I strongly recommend you to do so when you get this monitor because, well, especially if you're shooting with S-Log, because there's probably like 5,000 different official S-Log3 conversion lots out there from, from Sony. So having your own lots on the monitor makes sure that you will kind of recognize your footage once you pull it into your editing software and start dealing with things in post. Before we take a look at more technical stuff, I just wanted to talk about the built-in fan real quick. So like most monitors of this day and age with a brightness of 1000 nits or higher, they will often have a built-in fan that can be turned off if needed. There's a couple of these different fan modes from auto, power on and off, based on the temperature to low and obviously full blast. I've been running the fans on low and medium during my testing and I, I haven't run into much problems with fan noise and that sort of stuff. Obviously, if you're using a, a small on-camera mic like uh, like this one here, for instance, the uh, MKE 200, and you place that right next to the uh, exhaust of the fan the microphone will probably pick up some of the fan noise but you know that kind of goes without saying so same thing for pretty much any monitor with a fan or it is the same thing for any monitor with with a built-in fan don't place your <laughs> microphone right next to the exhaust and you'll be you'll be good to go on the more technical side of things, as I mentioned earlier, it's a five and a half inch IPS display with a thousand nit brightness, which to me have always worked pretty good outside in broad daylight, even without any sun hood. The screen resolution on this monitor, just like any other monitor at this size, regardless of price point, is 1920 by 1080 with a thousand to one contrast ratio. This gets further boosted in the HDR modes to give you a more accurate representation of what you're shooting, if you're shooting HDR, that is. 
but otherwise it's a standard 8-bit panel, which works for 99% of the people. Even if we're shooting 10-bit video, we still monitor our video or, you know, our footage with an 8-bit Rec. 7 line lot anyway. So unless you know that you need a 10-bit monitor, you probably don't need a 10-bit monitor. The power consumption, at least according to FieldWorld, is 10 watts, which will give you these approximate run times depending on the battery size that you use. The monitor doesn't come with any batteries, by the way, but I will link some of my favorites down below in case you need to pick a couple of those up for this monitor or for any other equipment that runs on MPF batteries. It does include this little hot shoe mount and two HDMI cables, one for HDMI A in both ends and the other one is HDMI A to micro HDMI. We also get one of these little USB-A to USB-C adapters for hooking up a thumb drive to the monitor to transfer our LUTs and any firmware updates down the road. So here's my, my kind of final thoughts or my summary, if you will. So I think the P6X is a worthy candidate for those looking for you know, an affordable camera monitor at this price point. I also think the 4K60 support for both 16 by 9 and DCI aspect ratios, by the way, obviously gives it kind of a leg up against some of the competition, along with things like multiple ways of powering this monitor. And speaking of powering, I guess we never took a look at that boot up time, but here it is. I think the, the boot up time is quite reasonable. It's definitely way faster than some of the other newer and more expensive monitors that I have, but more on that in, in that upcoming comparison video. And the one thing that I've found to complain about, so far at least, is the size of the menu system. Even if I like it a lot and I think it's easy to navigate and everything, I, I still think they could have made <laughs> that interface just a few pixels larger without having to truncate the menu or anything. But, you know, it's still clear and visible, but there's also room on the screen for, you know, those extra pixels on that menu, so yeah. Maybe we'll see that in some future firmware update or something. I don't know why they, they did it like they did, but you know, it works. Apart from that, I think they've done a great job at squeezing in a lot of bang for your buck into this monitor. You know, you get aluminum housing, you get great brightness and all the different features that you want. We also got that nifty anamorphic de-squeeze slider, which I really, really like when uh, when I'm shooting anamorphic and that kind of stuff. So yeah, good job feel world. But yeah, we'll be putting this head to head with a couple of more budget friendly monitors pretty soon here on this channel. So make sure to like that subscribe button if you want to see that video. But that's probably going to be it for today. So as always, in true YouTube fashion, links to everything we talked about down below in the description. But yeah, see you pretty soon, my friend. Okay, hey, Doa.